Last week, a question was asked about ArcGIS Online roles and user types, so I wanted to provide further elaboration uh, on this and also talk about settings within the organizational account that can be um, used to create custom roles within an organization. So all hack geospatial students have a GIS professional advanced and publisher um, user type and role. Uh, the reason for this designation for students in the geospatial program is because in order to be able to access the ArcGIS Pro license, you must have a GIS professional user type, whether it be a basic standard and advanced. The basic standard and advanced refer to what is available in ArcGIS Pro in terms of tools and services. Um, and each level has you know, more than uh, the previous, so all faculty and students in the geospatial technology program have the advanced um, user type uh, for a GIS professional that again gives you all the bells and uh, whistles. And again the re um, reason for the designation of the GIS professional is because if you didn't have that role or that sorry that user type you wouldn't be able to be provisioned a ArcGIS Pro license. So um, in terms of non-geospatial students then um, what they are given is the publisher and creator role and user type because it allows them to create things like story maps, dashboards, and so forth but it does uh, there's no need for them to have ArcGIS Pro licensing because they're only using ArcGIS online. So again the professional is really geared toward um, both the desktop user and the ArcGIS online uh, user while the, the creator slash publisher is more suited for someone who is only going to be using uh, ArcGIS online. Now in terms of these different roles and user types and, and what they are and what they can do, um, I have a web link um, with this that's actually off screen right now, it's down, down here, um, that can be um, I've referenced uh, to learn the differences between the different roles and user types. Uh, so I didn't include that in on the PowerPoint slide, but I included the link so that you can read through carefully which each one has. And I think it, this site does a really good job of uh, delineating what each um, role and user type uh, can do f uh, for you. So this page here is a, is a wonderful resource. In particular, um, if you uh, keep scrolling uh, down on this, it gets to a point where it gives you a privileged summary and um, the role and lets you know what each uh, one of those roles can do as it pertains to the, the, the um, particular uh, privilege. Um, so this can help you discern then what um, a level of um, role and user type um, you need to give to someone. It really depends on what they will be doing um, within the organization. Um, and then um, as I mentioned uh, there, there are custom roles and I'll show in a, uh, in a moment how to create a custom role within uh, the uh, organization. But this is actually really awesome um, because um, this is a way I, I see of, of creating like a pseudo administrator for, so, for some place like the, the Nature Conservancy who has one big national organization but has chapters uh, where um, individuals really could use some administrative uh, privileges. This allows um, um, the main administrator to parse out those certain admin administrative uh, privileges but, but not yet being a full uh, administrator. So it has a, a lot of power to it to really customize uh, a role so people are able to do their jobs and, and able to do what they need to, to be doing with ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Pro. So in terms of then creating a custom role. If you want to know what kinds of things are available um, or what kinds of privileges that there are out there, this site again lists every single privilege that is um, um, can be given uh, to a, a custom role and it gives it on both the member and the administrator level. Uh, so you can see all of that there. So again, for, for those of you that will be or looking to create custom roles but can't see um, what's available in ArcGIS Online because you're not an, an administrator, this tells you exactly what is part of um, each particular role and, and user type. So 
uh, this is a, this page is is a fantastic uh, reference, um, but going back to this uh, for a moment, as I mentioned, um, you can create uh, custom roles, and the uh, place that you go to within the organization to do that is uh, the organization tab, then settings, then member uh, roles, and then here you have the ability to create um, that c uh, customized role, and then it gives you a synopsis of what your org looks like currently. So in the hack org we have three administrators we don't have any data editors we have 756 um, publishers and then one user and one viewer and um, I imagine the user and the viewer were just a mistake um, that they uh, probably were supposed to be um, publisher uh, accounts but this little um, uh, explanation point that you see here, this little warning, um, what that is just saying is that um, this is one of my default settings. It, um, I set new member defaults so that I don't have to um, go through individual by individual and give uh, the, the particular role and user type uh, and licenses. I um, automatically ha have it, um, ArcGIS Online assign certain um, roles uh, and so forth. So let's take a look at that within uh, the organization. So um, as I said, to get to the information um, or the page where you can uh, change um, the settings is by going to uh, organization, then settings. From here then we would go to um, uh, member roles and uh, this is actually just um, a little uh, tip um, that it gives you saying that you can go to the members page and um, assign roles in bulk there if like you want to change uh, someone or something of, of that nature and um, one thing to mention is that when you add a user to this um, uh, you you assign them the username or sorry, the user type and role, but you can easily change that after the fact. So you're not uh, stuck um, with a particular role or user type um, and you, you don't have to re-add somebody to give them a, a new role and user type. It's just a setting that you, that you would change. Uh, so again, uh, you see this little uh, yellow explanation point saying uh, that this is a new member uh, default and it can be deleted or um, uh, changed. So um, if you want to create a custom role, you come in here and, and click create role and you uh, title your uh, role. And I'm going to call mine a pseudo administrator because I want to create a role that has some administrative um, uh, power but not at all the power uh, that that role uh, gives. Uh, for instance, I might want um, the pseudo administrator have the ability to uh, create groups and add new users and um, um, get rid of old users that are no longer with the organization. So uh, that's, uh, with, I don't know how to spell administrator apparently. <laughs> There we go. Um, so then once you have it named, um, the cool thing um, that you see, you'll see then, and let me um, uh, collapse those for a second. Um, you can build the privileges of your custom role. Uh, there's general privileges and administrative privileges. So uh, the general privileges, uh, you have things in six different categories, members, groups, content, sharing, premium content, and uh, features. So if you expand out uh, any one of these, you can see uh, what um, uh, each one or what each privilege, um, uh, what the privileges are within a particular um, a heading and then if you want to enable it you just um, move uh, this uh, over to the other side and um, it's it's enabled uh, so this is where you would set all the, the privileges for your new um, role but one of the things has a really good starting point um, for developing roles is uh, to uh, click this set from existing role. Um, because I'm creating like a pseudo administrator, I know that I want it to have everything that a publisher has. So if I uh, hit that and then import the settings, notice now that um, th this changes everything to every uh, setting that a, a, a publisher has. So I don't have to go and figure out which ones uh, belong to that. I can just automatically input them. And then um, because I want this role to have certain administrative privileges in addition to what, what they had as a publisher, I can go down to my administrative privileges and select what it is that I want them to be able to do. So in this case, I want um, 
the pseudo administrator to be able to invite new members to the organization so they can set up accounts for uh, those in their uh, chapter or um, area. Uh, I want them to be able to uh, change the role uh, of uh, people within the organization and also manage uh, licenses. Um, and then I can come down here to groups and again decide um, what um, I want them to be able to, uh, to do. So I would just check whatever those items are uh, there and so on. Uh, so then once I'm um, happy with all the new privileges that I gave, I just hit save Oh, I have to provide a description and I'm just going to cheat here and just do that and hit uh, save. Now you can see that that is an option uh, here and it says custom. Now when I go to my members page and I click on um, any uh, one. I'm going to just come down here and uh, click on this. And uh, now you can see uh, pseudo administrator is one of those um, new roles that can be assigned. Uh, so simple to create, but I get, I think that the nature of the question that was asked is, well, how do I, if I'm not an administrator, how do I know uh, what is um, available um, uh, uh, in terms of privileges and again it's this page that really can spell out everything um, that you would be able to um, utilize in a particular custom role. So I hope that helps and let me know if you have any further questions.